Hi, I'm Graham Glenn, Assistant Provost and Executive Director for Teaching, Learning plus Technology at Stony Brook University. And this is Innovations in Education. In our show, we feature faculty and staff using innovative approaches and best practices in teaching, and applications of educational technology that have had a positive effect on student learning. In this show, I'm joined by Patricia Seves, the director of the TLT Faculty Centre, and we will be discussing the role of faculty development centres on campus. Patricia, welcome to the show. Good morning, Graham. So what is the first thing that faculty should come to you for assistance with? One of the first steps that faculty will want to take is when they're developing a new course or revising a course or they have a substantial change in the course that they're teaching. For instance, it's going to a large lecture room or is going online. So there's a substantial change in the, in the teaching strategies and that's an excellent time for them to visit us. And in developing objectives, my experience has been that many faculty confuse course goals and learning objectives. Can you distinguish mm -hmm. between them? The course goal is the bigger picture, uh, more closely aligned with the course description and the program that the major is, the course is situated in the major. The learning objectives are what the faculty member wants the student to walk away with when they leave that class. Very specific objectives, things they need to know and do. Okay. Sounds like a very simple thing to write, is it? It, it, it can be. Faculty generally come to us and they know, they know instinctively what students should know. Mm -hmm. uh, but they don't always know how to articulate that right. on a piece of paper or how to write it in a way that is measurable and that students have a clear understanding of what they're expected to do and accomplish at the end of the course. So you're as much a sounding board for them in that process and helping them work through it as you are, you're not actually telling them well, here's learning objectives mm -hmm. you ha should have. You're really telling them, here's the best way to think about writing learning objectives and the components that need to be in it. Exactly. I met with a faculty member recently who I asked them to describe, tell me how you teach. What do you have students do in the classroom? Mm -hmm. And she was describing to me, they get together in small groups, they role play, they discuss, they analyze, and they critically evaluate the material in these role plays. So by listening to her talk through her teaching process and what the students accomplished there, we were able to write down what the learning objectives were and how the students would accomplish them. Okay. So what, what's the next step? What's the most common thing after objectives? The, the important thing to do after you establish your objectives is to determine how are you going to measure that students actually accomplish those objectives. So you, you start at the beginning, what do they need to know, and then you skip to the end and how am I going to assess that? So it's developing the assessments at that point to make sure that you're really measuring, are they learning what I'm expecting them to learn? Okay. In addition to faculty, you also support academic departments. Can you tell me a little bit about the services you provide them? Yes, we do provide support to departments, uh, committees within departments, uh, curriculum committees, assessment committees. But sometimes specific departments may have a specific need. For instance, if the department is looking at using new technology that's installed in one of their classrooms, or they're revising a program or a major, and they might need some group assistance to help them think through the process. And that's where we can come in. And you know, obviously a big role for a department chair is uh, guiding the rank and tenure process. Do mm -hmm. we have, or does your center have any role there? We can assist in peer evaluations, which is a part of the tenure mm -hmm. evaluation process, in how to conduct a good peer evaluation. What do you look for? What is good teaching? And both coach a faculty member and the, the faculty member who's being evaluated, as well as the one who's doing the evaluation. Okay. Um, what type of expertise do you have within the department to help with all of this? Uh, you're not the only staff member in mm -hmm. the center. We have, we've got a broad range of expertise within the faculty center and within TLT as a whole. And we've got uh, assessment specialist, Ying Shong, and Nancy Wozniak, who's our learning architect. And they both have tremendous experience in 
how do I start creating a course to how do I finish it and assess it at the end and even provide data to accreditors and external reviewers. So from conception through execution and reporting, we have expertise every step of the way. And you have a large number of other staff in TLT with educational technology and other areas. Absolutely. So the instructional strategies and how do I use the tools and incorporate them into my teaching. So. You know, I'm, I'm a relatively new faculty member. Mm -hmm. I walk into your office and I say, Patricia, I'm intimidated by teaching or I'm, I'm a little worried this is my first time teaching. Walk me through the process. How, what would you do with that faculty member? Who would you bring in to help them and so mm -hmm. on? Probably the first thing we would do is talk about their discipline, what they're teaching, and their expectations for the teaching experience. Mm -hmm. They may have served as a TA in the past. They may have had a specific style of teaching that they want to try. They may want to do a seminar or a large lecture. And so we'll talk through that process and help them to visualize what the course will look like and try to evaluate what is their natural teaching style and then pull in the, the, the resources and the people that can help them with those specific strategies. So step one is to get them doing things that they're very naturally comfortable with. Exactly. And then perhaps over time as the relationship develops and as they attempt to improve their course over multiple mm -hmm. semesters, adding new things, trying new strategies, things like that. Exactly. Okay. What other roles does the faculty center have on campus outside the faculty and department support mm -hmm. specifically? We assist the departments, the colleges, and the university with everything from organizational change, strategic planning, um, campus-wide initiatives in terms of where are we going with teaching and research and scholarship. Uh, scholarship of teaching and learning. We can support faculty as they're attempting to document the work that they're doing in the classroom. One of the challenges I had, I, I'm a quantitative scientist, pharmacology and neuroscience, and teaching research is a very qualitative science. There's a lot of qualitative statistics, for example, that are used. Mm -hmm. And I always felt very intimidated about trying to truly do any studies about how my teaching was going because I didn't have the right statistical tools, the right background in mm -hmm. using them, uh, even to, to, to design a good study to, to determine if the treatment was having a, an appropriate effect. Mm -hmm. So can you help with that? We can, and our assessment specialist has tremendous talent in working with faculty and really getting at the core of what is it that they're trying to assess and what data will help them to measure that and the statistical methods that are most appropriate. So basically faculty in any discipline could get some additional publications if they're doing some new things in their classroom. Absolutely. Uh, from student focus groups to developing rubrics to measure presentations and student projects, there are a wide range of methods and techniques that we can use to measure just about anything they're doing in the classroom. No, well, Patricia, thank you very much for being on the show today. Thank you, Graham. If you have any questions for Patricia, you can post them on the blog on the TLT website at tlt.stonebrook.edu, where we'll also post her direct contact information. I'm Graham Glynn, and I'm glad you could join me for this exciting Innovations in Education episode.